Haas. Should we Mister. talk about uh, writing equations of lines? Give yes, we points? should. Man, that is just one of those super important things. Super important, and you know, students have been doing this for years, but sometimes it's still a little confusing. I think they have, since probably Roman times. I think they've been doing it, right? <laughs> since birth. Yes, all right. Um, and you know, we have different ways we can write equations of lines. We can do standard form, which we really never do. Slope intercept form, point slope form. So I'm going to talk about those last two. Ah, yes. Okay. okay, but whenever I'm looking to find the equation of a line, the first thing, what makes something a line, Mr. Haas? Well, I mean, between any two points, it has the same slope. That's right. Certainly, yeah. So the slope is key, yeah. because the thing about a line is that the slope is constant. So I always like finding the slope, and the slope, of course, is always the change in your y over your change in your x, right? And if I were just to kind of loosely graph these, 2, 6 is somewhere there, negative 1, 5 is somewhere there. I do that too, you know, it gives me sort of a rough idea. I should get yeah. some positive slope there. Yeah. I should get some positive slope, not too steep, right? Absolutely. All right, so rise over run, my change in my y over change in x. Okay, so I'm just going to do this. 6 minus 5 over 2 minus a negative 1. Of course, we have to be careful with that double negative becoming a positive. And we have a slope of 1 third. Did I do that OK? Yeah, that, uh, and that looks about right. That yeah, looks you about right. You do it very well. I went up 1 and over 3. Or I could go up 2 and over 6, or up 10 and over 30, right? But all of those points would be on this line. OK, I'm going to. I'm going to do the simple thing here. All right. I'm going to opt for my point slope form of the line, which, if you recall, is that right there. And so many students say, oh, I don't like the point slope form because I can't memorize it. But really, it's just slope. It's just slope. It's just slope. <laughs> I heard you just say that oh, back sorry, then. Oh, sorry. It's just slope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I divide it, isn't this just the change in y over the change in x equals the slope? I mean, that's really what it is. But of course, that x1, y1 is a specific point on my line. Okay? So, with that in mind, I'm just going to pick either point. Let's just pick this one. I could have picked that one. It's a good one, yeah. And I'm going <laughs> to get this one of my favorites. So I'm going to substitute in the 5 for my y value. My slope I know is 1 third. And I have to pick the x that went with the 5. That's a negative 1. So can x minus a negative 1 would be x plus 1. This right there is an equation of a line. Sometimes students think, oh, they have to clean it up, they have to distribute combined like terms. You can, but you don't have to. And in fact, this is a very useful form of the line because I can find the slope and I know a point. I can just graph negative 1, 5 and go up 1 over 3, up 1 over 3 and graph my line. And there we have it. Yeah, that looks good. Fantastic. Shall we try another one, Mr. Haas? Let's do another one. Okay, here we go. I want to find the equation of a line that has an x-intercept of 3 fifths and a y-intercept of 3. Good. So again, I'm going to make a little picture. Oh, yeah. It's just helpful to visualize it. x-intercept, 3 fifths, somewhere around there. And in fact, there are coordinates to that point, right? I, the x value is 3 fifths, and the y value, I guess, has to be 0 if it's an x-intercept. Mm. y-intercept, 3, so that's going to be somewhere up here, and again, I will write the coordinates of that. If the y-intercept is 3, that means the point 0, I do the three. same thing. I fill in the zeros. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then I'm going to make my little line here. And I think we can see that I'm going to have a negative slope. Right? So should we find our slope? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So slope, of course, as we know, is the change in my y over the change in my x. So my change in y is 
3 minus 0. Well, could I do 0 minus 3 if I wanted to? Sure, as long as you're consistent. As long as I'm consistent. You got it. So if I'm doing 3 minus 0, I have to do 0 minus 3 fifths. All right, that gives me 3 over negative 3 fifths. Now, you're a math teacher, so you're not going to run am. screaming from the room, but other people run screaming from the room when they see a fraction Scream, in a fraction. Really? Well, all right. Perhaps, okay. well, all right. you know, figuratively <laughs> screaming, not literally. All right. Um, you know, there are a whole bunch of ways you can do this. You're dividing, so you can multiply 3 by the reciprocal of this. What I like to do is just to get rid of that denominator of a 5. How can I get rid of that denominator, Mr. Just Hustle? multiply by 5, perhaps, sure. on the top and bottom? Yeah. Sure. So if I multiply the bottom by 5, I can multiply the top by 5. And that way, I'm just multiplying by a fancy form of 1. Yeah. Right? I can do that with fractions. 3 times 5 gives me 15 in the numerator. Negative 3 fifths times 5 is a negative 5. 3 in the denominator, and that gives me a slope of negative 5. All right? You know, I think I'm going to use my slope-intercept form of a line, just since I have a y-intercept and I have a slope. Seems to make sense. So here we go. y equals negative 5x plus 3. Da, 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 da. I have an equation of a line. Wow, that wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. It's just this fraction business. Just be strong. Thanks, Ms. Stewart. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Haas.